Today, we're going to take a first look at the Samyang Autofocus 18mm f2.8 lens for your Sony E-mount system. Let's go! And here it is on the Sony a7 III. It's an 18 millimeter wide angle or ultra wide angle depending on your point of view lens. It's plastic-y, but the build quality seems pretty good except for this lens hood. It's kind of mm, not, not the best lens hood. It doesn't really, when you try to fold it back over, it doesn't, doesn't really fit very well. But other than that, it is an 18mm f2.8 for Sony E-mount system. It sells for $400. Go over a few of the specs and I'm going to show you some of the pictures that I took in some of the video. Its minimum focusing distance is 0.82 feet. It's got a 58mm thread, as you can see there. It does have full autofocus and full EXIF data. It comes with this nice soft case that you can see here, so you can take this with you without worrying about it being trashed. There is no image stabilization, so I'll show you some vlog footage. You'll see in there that there's no image stabilization. Even with the a7 III in-body stabilization, uh, I'll, I'll let you see how it goes. But there are nine elements in eight groups. It's a, equivalent to about a 100 degree angle on a full frame. It weighs just five ounces or just a little over five ounces. It's two inches long and it uses an STM motor and, and the motor is really, really quiet. So again, here it is on the a7 III. I'm going to take you to the zoo. I went to the zoo. I also went to my favorite spot, which is the American Tobacco Campus, to take some shots. I'll show you some pictures. I'll show you some video, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about this lens. Okay, we'll start out at the North Carolina Zoo. This is one of the exhibits there, the desert exhibit. This is 18 millimeter at f2.8. These are all straight out of the camera, and I pretty much shot f2.8 for all of these shots to give you an idea on what you can expect at 2.8 so you can see zooming in at 100 percent good color good clarity good sharpness the middle looks good corners you know there's a little bit of vignetting you can see here and that's probably just because we're at f 2.8 it's out of focus but the corners aren't sharp necessarily and you can see there's a little bit of distortion there but it is an 18 millimeter lens you can kind of expect that i believe Here's just a cactus shot. I'm trying to not really get artistic, but capture what I can at the zoo. Again, at 100% in the middle, sharp. Clarity looks good, contrast looks good. I did use the lens hood with all these shots, so that's what you can expect with the lens hood. Another shot from the zoo, not spectacular, but just wanted to capture this greenery, show you again the color, the clarity, the sharpness of the lens. Pretty impressive. I did a couple shots of series. I own all three of these lenses. There's an 18 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, and a 35 millimeter f2.8. Just wanted to show you the differences between the field of view on the three. And you can see here there's a little distortion. This wall is not exactly straight, but again, that's uh, can be expected. It can be corrected in Lightroom fairly easily. Not going to be a Lightroom tutorial, but you can fairly easily correct that. So this is the field of view at 18 millimeters. This is at 24, and I kind of messed up the exposure here in the contrast. I think the, the light actually, the, the sun went behind a cloud, so it's a little different as far as color and contrast goes, but this is the 24 millimeter field of view. And then this is the 35 millimeter field of view. And you can see, again, these are all the Samyang lenses. 18, 24, and 35 millimeters, and you can see the information here as well. So it just gives you an idea on the field of view differences. Here's a shot, nothing spectacular, but again, just want to show you, you can kind of see me in the reflection, the sharpness. In the middle, it's really sharp. As far as bokeh goes, you know, it's an 18 millimeter lens, you won't get a ton necessarily, but you can see these folks in the background are nicely out of focus. This is out of focus, so you can get 
okay bokeh with this. I wouldn't compare it to a 70 to 200 bokeh, but get some decent bokeh. I took a picture of this water. Water, when it's in the bright sunlight, will show fringing, this purple fringing or green fringing, uh, chromatic aberrations. And in this particular shot, it did a really good job. I don't really see any purple fringing, but there is some we'll see coming up here. And this is just a high contrast shot. Again, you know, part of it is the camera, part of it is the lens, but looking at the sharpness in the center, sharpness looks good. Again, maybe a slight bit of vignetting in the corners at f2.8, which all these shots, actually this one was taken at f7, so not, I mean, probably still a little bit at f7, but not a ton. That also could be the, the camera itself. And this is one where you will see some, some CA or fringing. You can see here, if you can notice that hopefully it comes through, there's some purple fringing. It can be easily corrected in Lightroom. This is just showing kind of the differences between the highlights and the shadows and how the lens handles it. And part of it is the camera as well. So this is at f2.8 again. And you can see the bokeh. Again, there's some out of focus bits there. And this is another series of shots. So this is at 18 millimeter. I just kind of like the way the light was falling here. So there's 18 millimeter. This is the 24 millimeter. And again, the exposures are a little bit different. The light was changing. And then here is the 35 millimeter. So with these three lenses, it's a pretty good trio. You can cover from 18 to 35 millimeter. So super wide or wide to uh, normal, I guess you would say 35 millimeters on a full frame and they weigh practically nothing. You know, this one weighs five ounces. I think the others might weigh six ounces, something like that. It's really not, not a lot of weight to carry around in your bag. Here's another shot again. I just kind of liked the light on this one. You can see again in high contrast areas, sometimes you'll see that fringing. I don't really see it here. And this is another shot where I took to see, this one usually shows fringing fairly easily. And I've taken this shot in a few of my first looks. So it looks good. Again, clarity, color, contrast, all that stuff looks really, really good to me. And another example of the bokeh and the CA, you really don't see any here. If you look at these high contrast areas, sharpness looks good in the middle and you can see these people are out of focus. And then here's just kind of an overall scene again with some water in it, which can show that purple fringing usually in water. And I really don't see a lot of purple fringing here. You look up here and again you can see that purple fringing just a little bit on the leaves of the tree. And again hopefully that comes through, but just a click of the dropper. Let's try to do that real quickly click on the dropper you choose the color that you want to try to eliminate so there's some purples here and you can see just one click pretty much took care of most of that and there's a way that you can fine-tune that to get rid of that altogether but it's really just it's not that noticeable unless you zoom in but it does exist so there is some some CA there and then here's just another shot very similar with again you can see the bokeh these folks are out of focus those were the pictures I wanted to show you Let's look at some videos and we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this lens.
18 millimeter lens on the Sony a7 III. F2.8 using the mics on the a7 III at the North Carolina Zoo in North America. Just finished lunch. Check out North America in reverse. Normally we go to North America first. We went to Africa first this time, so changed it up a little bit. So again, this is the 18 millimeter Samyang F2.8 at 2.8. 24p 4k on the Sony a7 III. So there you have it there warrior pictures in the video you can see the the CA or the chromatic aberrations fairly well controlled there are a, a couple of pictures you saw that there was some CA there but again in Lightroom you can pretty much correct that with a dropper or maybe just a little bit more work but it should be fairly easy to correct. There's a slight bit of distortion Again, I kind of test this in a real world situation, so you'll see, you won't see that distortion as much maybe as you would on the test chart, but there is some distortion on the edges. It's 18 millimeters, so it is wide angle on this A7 III. It's a great little lens. I, you saw some comparisons with the 24 millimeter and the 35 millimeter. You take these three and you've got your wide to mid angle covered and it's very little weight, takes a very little space in the bag. I think the lens is sharp. I think the color reproduction is great. Contrast is great. For $400 for an 18 millimeter lens for your Sony system, G Master lenses are crazy expensive. Sigma's coming out with some lenses that are, are value compared to G Master, but this is probably the value leader. But if you're looking for an 18 millimeter lens, maybe not great for vlogging necessarily because there is no image stabilization, but if you're looking for photography or you want to do some video locked off on a tripod, I think this is a great lens. Look for a full review to come. I'll use this for a while. I'm going to take it with me on a couple of trips but I will definitely give you a full review after I've used it for a while. Get out there and have your photo gear fun. If you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing if you haven't already. I will talk at you again in the next video.